Hello everyone. Welcome to this course on convex optimization E609. My name is Ketan Rajawat and I am a faculty at Electrical Engineering Department at IIT Kanpur. So let us first begin with uh, defining mathematical optimization or it is also called mathematical programming which is basically a tool for solving quantitative problems that arise in engineering, economics, biology, physics, finance, etc. So all of these quantitative problems that arise in various kinds of areas have something in common. And that is what the mathematical optimization captures. So essential idea of mathematical optimization is that you need to express a real world problem as an optimization model. So what is an optimization model? Uh, an optimization model contains an objective or a goal, right, which you want to achieve. Then there is a certain decision variables or design variables, which you have control over. And there are certain constraints or restrictions which are imposed on these design variables. So let me state the goals of this course. Convexity is an important component of this course, and I want you to appreciate the role that convexity plays in optimization theory. At the end of this course, you should be able to learn to formulate various kinds of problems that arise in signal processing, communications, machine learning, robotics, control, and so on as optimization problems. So learning to formulate is an important part you should also be able to understand the watershed or the division between easy and hard problems. So what kind of problems are considered to be easy versus what kind of problems are considered to be hard and you should be able to recognize them. And finally, you should be able to see that sometimes seemingly difficult problems or seemingly hard problems can actually be reformulated or manipulated into a form that makes them easy. Overall, we will see several general approaches that will allow us to solve these problems either accurately or approximately. We will also derive various kinds of bounds that will be helpful in solving these problems. So with that, let us come to the prerequisites that are required for this course. It is very important that you have a firm grasp on linear algebra. So if you are not certain about it or you have forgotten some of the things, it is very important that you brush up the basics. In fact, we will cover some of the basics in the first few lectures. And I want you all to pay very close attention to those first few lectures because all the other lectures will rely on those. Uh, additionally, we will want you to have some idea of probability theory because many times we will express some things like expectations, probability, mass functions, distributions, without actually telling you what they are. And I expect that all of you know it already. So these are the two key prerequisites. And uh, you don't need to know basics of signal processing or communications or machine learning. I will not really require you to know all those basics. I will introduce those topics as if it is for a new audience. So if you don't know those things, it is fine. Then uh, a key reference that we will use is this book called Convex Optimization by Stephen Boyd and uh, Levin Vandenberg, which is available online. So the whole book is available as a PDF file online. Uh, you don't have to buy it. And additionally, Boyd's lectures are also available on YouTube. So the link is given. Additionally, you can just search it on YouTube. You will find easily. Uh, there are also lots of resources related to convex optimization on the internet. If you just start searching, you will find all kinds of uh, resolutions to all your doubts. Uh, this Boyd book in particular is slightly more mathematical in the sense that if you are new to this subject, you will find it a little bit overwhelming. Uh, but it takes time, but uh, you will get used to it. So let us come to some of the administrative details related to this course. Firstly, the marks distribution. So for this course, I'm planning to have a quiz worth 5% every week from week two to week 10. And uh, so overall nine weeks, so that contributes to about 45% of the course marks. And then we will have a project 
and the project report will be worth 25 marks. We will also have a mid-sem exam somewhere around 20th, 21st February, which will be around 10% marks. And there will be an end sum exam, which is 20% marks. So that total is 100%. For the quizzes, I will announce the date in advance. And uh, don't worry if you are unable to attend it because of some network connectivity issues or medical issues. I, I will hold a makeup quiz for all of you who miss one of the quizzes. Right? But you have to provide proof that you missed it for a bona fide reason. Uh, some key course policies that I want to state up front is that I will not allow mid-sim drop, which is drop after January 20th. So you have the first week to decide whether you want to take this course or not. And after that, if you have taken it, then you are not allowed to drop it. It is important and it is mandatory for you to participate in all the course components. So for example, you have to give all the quizzes, you have to give the mid-sim, end-sim, project, everything. You cannot skip a component. If you skip a component, then you will not be graded. Then, uh, of course, cheating is not allowed. You are not allowed to look at your notes or books when the exam is being conducted. And finally, uh, you must have a good internet connection because during the exams, I will require you to turn on your video. If you don't have an internet connection, good internet connection, I request you to please arrange for it, at least during the quizzes and exams. Of course, the lectures will also be posted online, but those you can also download. So let me just give you some tips on how to get most from this course. Because this course is in online format, it is important that you don't treat the videos as lectures. In fact, the time that it takes uh, for a video is much smaller than the time that it takes for me to say the same thing in a lecture. Indeed, I expect you to spend 2.5 times the duration of a video on a video. So for example, if a video is 10 minutes long, then you should spend 25 minutes on that video. Basically, you sit down with a pen and paper, record all the things that I am writing and I'm saying, pause the video often, rewind it as many times as you want in order to understand the whole concept properly. I also require that you read the book, the Boyd's book, and go beyond what I have said in the class. Do not look up the solutions on the internet. It is very easy to sometimes just search how the solution looks like. But before, instead, I would suggest that you just try to solve the problem. If you are not able to solve the problem, discuss it with your friends. And if you are still not able to solve the problem, you discuss it with me. You can also post your questions on the forums and I will answer. And perhaps others can also answer. Uh, sometimes for those of you for which this topic is entirely new, you might need to spend two to four days per week, at least initially. This will not be throughout the course, at least in the first month, I have seen students spending this much time in order to get started. If you are familiar with ML or uh, if you are familiar with algorithms, you will need lesser time. You will need perhaps one day per week. So that is all for this uh, video. And we will continue with the next video in which we will cover the overview of the course and some notation we will introduce. Thanks.